Hi, Noam Wallenberg here to talk about some more production uses for Moises. Today we are continuing to work on a track called Belonging Forever by the artist Jennifer Hall. And we are getting to the chorus of this song, which previously we did not have any vocals written for. Uh, we had a track, we didn't have any vocals. I needed to send that vocal part to the artist in a way that communicated the intention of the sound. The issue with that is that not only am I not a singer, right, that singing is not my skill set, I also have a vocal range that is completely different than hers, and this song is not physically possible for me to sing in any reasonable way, right? It would sound completely ridiculous. However, I still need to give her something that shows her what the song sounds like so that she can learn it and that she can uh, sing it effectively. Previously, what I might have done is taken my voice into uh, some kind of pitch shifting program and shifted it up and it would end up sounding like a weird chipmunk voice. And I would just kind of preface to the artist, hey, don't, you know, I know it sounds crazy, but like tr try to see past that. But the truth is, if you're trying to sell someone on it, it's really, really difficult to see past that. That is where Moises Voice Studio is going to come into play here. Today, we are going to take my voice, we're going to transform it with Moises Voice Studio voice tone transfer, and then we are going to drop it back into the session so that we can send it to the artist. So first, let's listen to the vocal that I recorded. I can't record it at the pitch of the actual song. So I just sang this as high as I could reasonably, and then we're going to pitch it up. So here is the original recording that I made. Dreaming, barely breathing on the floor. And we're going to immediately pitch it up, right? So it's going to kind of sound like a chipmunk. Dreaming, barely breathing on the floor. Sounds terrible, right? Obviously, it's not meant to sound that way, but that's the best that I could produce with, with what I had. We are going to now take that into Moises, and let's see what we can do with it. So first, I am... Consolidating this to the beginning, this isn't totally necessary, but it, it uh, makes it a little easier because you don't have to deal with the timing. I'm going to export that. So now I'm here in the voice studio of Moises, and I'm going to click Convert Voice, and I can just drop an audio file straight into there. I have already made my pitch adjustment in Pro Tools. I, I pitched it up to the key that it needed to be. I could also not do that. I could just do my pitch adjustment here in, in Moises. I could take it up an octave. I could do whatever I need to. Um, there's also the option of isolating lead vocals. That is, if you're working with like a demo track or something that already has other instruments in it, it can take out the other instruments. So we're going to submit that. So right away, it gives me a bunch of voices, right? These are kind of the suggested voices that it finds are going to be the best use for, for what you submitted. This is based on a few things, right? This is based on the range. This is based on the quality. It also gives you some options that are in different ranges, right? So this particular voice, right, this is a soprano. And because I pitched mine up, I might be a soprano as well. This at the original key is like a, an appropriate use of that voice, right? Meaning that she is, uh, would be singing in a range that would be reasonable for her. For this one, for Arthur, for instance, he's a baritone, right? So dropping the whole thing by an octave, it would put it in a, in a range that would be appropriate for his voice. This is the case for all these. So you have a bunch of options if you want to try it with, with different octaves or, or, or different types of voices. Not only do we have all of these suggested voices, we have a ton of other voices. And this is stuff that they are continuing to work on nonstop, right? So, so constantly they're adding voices to this. So for this one today, I'm going to pick one of the non-suggested ones, which is Ellie, an alto, recorded with a C414. I can see all the, all the information there. I'm going to click Use Voice. So these are all real artists that they're using. When you pick one of these, uh, it is a real artist somewhere. They, they recorded this at legitimate studios. You get to see like what microphones they used and stuff like that. So if you want a certain type of sound based on the microphone, you can kind of pick, pick a sound based on that. And this is all like royalty free licensing stuff, right? So the artist gets a, a fee from Moises when they get used, but you are not paying anything in terms of licensing or, or in terms of like any commercial licensing. All that stuff is completely 
fair game, uh, you can use these for anything that you want to use them for. Okay, so let's download the, download the file. And we're going to drag it into Pro Tools. So here's my vocal again that went into the program. Dreaming better than breathing on the floor. Recalling the fire strength. And now here's the Moises voice. Dreaming better than breathing on the floor. Recalling the fire strength. Completely nuts, right? Uh, it, it sounds emotive, right? It, it, it is, it's not a gimmick the way that we're using this right now, right? We are using it to, to bring emotion to the thing that we're trying to express to the artist in a way that my weird monster voice does not necessarily do. Uh, let's hear it in context with the track. Great. So that's what we sent to Jen, and here's what she gave us back. Dreaming, barely breathing on the floor, recalling for fire, straining, gray remaining in a world, drown out my desires. Fantastic. We're going to do one more thing with this voice studio, which is I want to thicken up these background vocals. Now this is, yet again, another trick that we can do with, with um, this voice studio is uh, we can feed it some of our background vocals and we can get it doubled by different voices just to give a little bit of texture to what we recorded. So here is Jen singing these background vocals. Cool. Great. Uh, I'm going to export that and I'm going to send it to the voice studio. So I've been using this all week, so I've already kind of picked some of the voices that I think are working well with Jen. So uh, Amelia is one that they recommended that I think works great. And then I'm also going to grab Barbara and we're going to go ahead and download both of these. Okay, we brought these into the session. So here's Jen's vocal. Fantastic. And here is Amelia. And here's Barbara. Here's all of them together. Here's just Jen again. And here's with the extra voices. So it's not necessarily like we're sounding like we're adding some extra singers to this, right? It's just a textural tool. You can not only give it um, extra texture with it, you can give it extra body, you can give it extra, all, all these things that just EQ alone or chorus or, or, or these effects, doubler effects, are, are not necessarily going to give you. You can add through this because we're synthesizing new voices that have a whole different range of frequencies. Through that, you, you can not only add texture and, and, and depth to some of these background parts, um, we can even add fidelity, right? These, uh, we might have recorded these on a bad microphone. And by doubling it with these extra voices, um, they might have recorded theirs on really, really nice microphones. And we can kind of add some, some high-end sheen or some low-end body, uh, these things that we would never be able to do before, we can add with this program. Thanks for watching. Check out the next video where we're going to check out some more production stuff with Moises.